Mercury is a poisonous metal. In its natural state, it is buried in rocks and minerals. But human activity has released mercury into our atmosphere. Mercury is a unique element. Mercury is the only metal that's liquid at room temperature, which means it's very volatile. We don't normally think of metals as uh, something that gets into the atmosphere, but mercury is one that does. Think about how water behaves. You heat up water and it forms steam. Mercury does the same thing. At room temperature, there's actually a little bit of mercury gas in the air, and as you warm it up, there's even more mercury in the air. One of the ways we get mercury into the environment is by burning things. Mercury has contaminated our ecosystems for 150 years since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. As soon as we started burning things that contain coal, and as soon as we started mining gold, which uses a lot of mercury, uh, we started contaminating the atmosphere with mercury. Once in the atmosphere, mercury can easily travel throughout ecosystems. When we burn things that contain mercury, mercury is emitted to the atmosphere in the form of a gas. In order to have that mercury come back into our ecosystems, mercury has to undergo chemical transformations in the atmosphere. One of the things that happens is that mercury gas gets oxidized into a form that's soluble in water, and then it returns to ecosystems in the form of rain. The other way that mercury gets back into our ecosystems is by vegetation actually drawing gaseous mercury out of the atmosphere. Dr. Cindy Gilmore's research group at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center is studying how mercury moves from the atmosphere through an ecosystem. At CERC, we're interested in whether mercury controls on emissions are going to be effective, and so we monitor mercury concentrations in rain. We also measure how much mercury gets into the trees by measuring how much mercury is flowing down our streams. To follow the path of mercury, the team starts by examining rain. At the top of Cirque's meteorological tower, where one of the 80 mercury deposition network sites in the U.S. is operated, the team collects rain samples. What happens is when you burn coal, you separate mercuric sulfide into mercury and sulfur. Sulfur mixes with the rain, becomes acid rain. The mercury stays up in the air. It may stay in the air for as long as a year, but eventually it, it comes down in rainfall. After leaving the atmosphere via rain, mercury next moves into ponds and streams. At a weir, water samples are collected before being taken back to the lab to be analyzed. Mercury comes out of the sky, usually on particles, falls onto the landscape, falls onto water bodies. We are able to collect it here and measure it as it washes off the land and before it gets into a bigger estuary like the Chesapeake Bay or the Atlantic. As the flow of mercury nears the coast, it collects deep in sediments. Here, bacteria convert mercury into methylmercury, a neurotoxin that affects the development of the human brain. Methylmercury accumulates in food webs and eventually contaminates animals that live in the sea. We're not just interested in how much mercury lands on our landscapes, but we're also interested in how that mercury moves through the landscape and moves into animals. And a really important step in all of this is the transformation of mercury to methylmercury. Methylmercury production is a natural process that bacteria do in places where soils are wet and in sediments of aquatic ecosystems. One challenge with methylmercury is that it actually accumulates instead of declines as it moves through an ecosystem. There aren't many compounds that actually bioaccumulate through the food web. Bioaccumulation means that the concentration in the animals at each step of the food web goes up. And the reason that it goes up is because animals have a hard time getting rid of that compound. The concentration of methylmercury in fish tissue can be much higher than the concentration of methylmercury in the water the fish lives in. Methylmercury concentrations in animals tend to increase by about a factor of 10 at every step in the food web. So in Chesapeake Bay, you might have a food web that starts with a worm that lives in sediments. 
and that might be eaten by a small fish and then by a larger fish. Each, each one of those steps, the mercury concentration, the methylmercury concentration in the tissue of that organism is 10 times higher. So we're really interested in where methylmercury gets produced in our landscapes, and that's one of the things we study here at CERC. So there are several places in the CERC watershed where the inorganic mercury that's deposited onto the landscape ends up being converted to methylmercury, primarily by bacteria that inhabit anoxic soils and sediments. One of the most important places in the CERC watershed where that process happens is in this tidal marsh that we're standing in, where bacteria inhabiting these, the mud of this sediment convert mercury, inorganic mercury, to methylmercury, and ultimately that methylmercury works its way up the aquatic food web. The team extracts sediment cores from the marsh. Then, all the samples from the mercury's journey are analyzed back in the lab. We have our filtered water sample from the weir. We put it in our still. The methylmercury comes over in the vapor and is collected in our receivers, which then gives us a nice clean sample which we can analyze for methylmercury. When the water samples arrive from distillation, they're added to this auto sampler. This instrument bubbles the methylmercury out of the samples. It separates the methylmercury from the water and releases it into this gas, where the methylmercury from the gas is collected on traps in this top compartment. It's released to our ICPMS, which is a detector capable of measuring specific elements in the samples that are introduced to it. And this instrument is where we finally quantify how much methylmercury is in those samples. The research team is finding that most of the mercury in the food chain comes from recent depositions of mercury. What we found is that most of the mercury in the food web is coming from mercury that came into the ecosystem in the last two to three years. There's a big component of mercury in fish that is from new mercury. There is a component from old mercury. So all that contamination gets into food webs a little bit, but it's just not as mobile, it's just not as readily methylated as the new mercury that's deposited to our ecosystems in the last few years. The good news that old mercury is less harmful to ecosystems allows us to focus on decreasing current and future mercury emissions. Our research tells us that most of the mercury that gets in the food web comes from mercury that's been deposited fairly recently to ecosystems. So it's important to control new sources of mercury to ecosystems. It's important to control emissions from power plants. It's important to control emissions from other industrial sources.